Hello everyone, it's Jess and welcome back to my channel, Nose in a Book. So today I'm going to be doing my fall recommendations video for you guys. Um, I know that it's almost Halloween already, but these are not all just Halloween books. Some of them are kind of a little bit more spooky, but I thought of anything that kind of gave me a fall vibe, like that cozy reading, maybe a little spooky and mysterious. I don't really like too many scary books, so nothing is super scary. If I can read any of these books, if you guys don't like scary books, but you want a little spook factor, I am such a wimp. I can't read anything scary at all. And so any of these spooky, scary-ish books in here are like things that, that children could read and not be scared. <laughs> I would definitely recommend these for anyone who is a total wimp. So I have 13 books to recommend for you guys to read during the fall months and get all cozy and snuggly and read some of these books. I thought 13 was a good unlucky number for the fall time. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So there's an assortment of books ranging from middle grade all the way to adult so that way any of you who are looking for something cozy to read you will find something fun hopefully <laughs> in this video so the first book that i have to recommend for you is a middle grade book and that is the secret garden by francis hodgson burnett this book is amazing it was one of my childhood favorites and if you haven't read The Secret Garden I'll try to give you a little synopsis of it. So this book follows Mary and Mary lived in India with her family with her mom and dad and they passed away from illness. Uh, I think it was dengue fever but I can't remember which one it was. Anyways so when they pass away she has to go live with her only living relatives in England and that is her uncle and he lives in this spooky manor with all these closed like grounds and she arrives during the fallish winterish time and it's just really spooky and dead and everything is like lifeless and haunted basically like it's not actually haunted there are no ghosts but it's like that haunted feeling and so this is about her kind of bringing life back to this place and we find a lot of really cool um, really cool little mysteries that are solved in this and it just it's very magical and beautiful and again it's kind of a lot of it set in a garden so you get a lot of that fall and winter in a garden which I find to be quite beautiful because even though all of the things look and seem dead there's actually a whole bunch of life in that garden and so when it all comes to life in the spring it's just absolutely gorgeous. I also highly recommend the movie The Secret Garden. It is amazing and the soundtrack is amazing so highly recommend for this for any time of the year but especially during the fall time. Number two is also a middle grade, and this is actually a series that is Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. So this book follows our main character, Maggie, and her father, when he reads aloud, is able to read characters or objects out of books. But when he does that, some objects from our world or people from our world disappear. Presumably, I think they go back into the book, but I'm not positive. I can't remember. So it's been a long time since I've read this, but from what I remember, it's just got that really wonderful magical feeling that I just look for in that fall type of book. So I would highly recommend the book. Definitely not the movie. I really didn't like the movie at all, but the book is really good. And I do plan on rereading this sometime soon, but I probably won't get to it in 2016 because I just have so many other books that I need to read. So this is going on my list of things I will probably reread re next year, but it is super good and I highly recommend it for the fall time. Number three is another middle grade series and that is The Nancy Drew Secrets by Caroline Keene. This is the first book, The Secret of the Old Clock in the new fancy arty co artsy covers. Um, I love these. They are so pretty and I only have four of them currently but I plan on collecting all of them. They're just gorgeous. So if you guys aren't aware of Nancy Drew, well, First of all, where have you been? Or you must be really, really young, in which case I forgive you and go read Nancy Drew. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, Nancy Drew follows our main character, Nancy Drew, and she is an amateur sleuth. And that just is a fancy word for she is an amateur detective. And so basically, um, there are lots of each book is its own mystery and she has to solve the mystery and find out what's going on in each one. And there's little bits of danger, nothing too scary, but sometimes spooky 
Um, similar to like the original Scooby-Doo series where there's always like a reason behind everything even if there's a ghost it's not really a ghost that kind of thing so these are super cute and just fun to read during the fall especially if you want something really nostalgic and you've read Nancy Drew before I just highly recommend these as a reread or a first time read during the fall time so number four on my list is a YA series and that is the Keisha Ross series by Amelia Atwater Rhodes this is the second book in the series because I don't own the first one yet so the first book in the series is called Hawk Song and that one follows Danica and Zane and they are from two different um, clans of shapeshifters um, Danica is a bird shapeshifter, thus Hawk Song, and Zane is a snake shapeshifter. He's a cobra shapeshifter, thus the second book's named Snake Charm. And basically, they're trying to create a treaty between the two clans. And so Zane and Danica will probably have to marry for that. And that's not going to go over well because their clans have been at war for a very long time and they really hate each other. So. So a bunch of beautiful goodness will occur from that, and it's amazing, and I love it so much. I need to reread the series, guys, but I highly recommend, if you haven't read this before, that you should pick it up. Number five is another YA series, and that is the Mediator series by Meg Cabot. If you don't already know, I am a huge Meg Cabot fan, as showcased by my shelf behind my head here that is almost entirely Meg Cabot books. And this series was one of my absolute favorites. This series follows our main character, Suze, and she is a mediator. She can see ghosts. And she finds out one day that she can see ghosts because one of her parents, I can't remember if it's her father or her mother, one of them has passed away and they haunt her. I think it's her father, though. And he comes back and basically she's like, oh, I can see you. And so then I can see ghosts. And so then from then on, she kind of can recognize when she sees a ghost. Well, she moves into this house and is haunted by a really hot, sexy Spanish ghost named Jesse. <sighs> Jesse was my true love. I love Jesse so much. It's just amazing. So anyways, um, it's just her dealing with her powers and also trying to help people to the other side and also deal with her normal teenager life. I recommend it for fall because it is just a nice like spooky ghost story that's not too scary. Um, so it's a whole series and the series does continue from book one on. This is actually the second book called The Ninth Key and I think the first one first one is called Shadowland and I just really love this series so much so I highly recommend it. I highly recommend anything by Meg Cabot but this is a great one to read during the fall. Number six is another YA series and that is the His Fair Assassins series. This is the second book Dark Triumph. The first one is called A Grave Mercy and this book series follows different a different character each book but the, each character is a girl who has been trained at a convent to be an assassin for the god of death. And it has that Celtic-y, spooky vibe. Um, I really, really love it. The fact that they are trained to kill for the god of death gives it that spooky, fall time, dreary feeling. But it's also got just amazing romance in it and politics. And I just really, really love this series so much. Um, so I would highly recommend it anytime. I plan on reading this book really soon, hopefully in the month of November, um, if I can with NaNoWriMo, because I have it out from the library and I need to return it sometime soon. I think it's like in the next couple of weeks. So for number seven, I have another YA series, and that is the Forbidden Game series by L.J. Smith. She is the writer of The Vampire Diaries, and this book series, this is actually all three books, though they're not like huge books. This is a bind up of all three. So this series follows our main character, Jenny, and she purchases a board game to use at a party that she's having later. And so when she has this party with some of her friends and some she doesn't know so well, and so the board game, you build this little house and then in each room in the house, each person who's playing the game writes down their worst fear on a sticky note and sticks it face down in each one of the rooms. And then you roll the dice to see who gets to go first. Well, when they roll the dice, they end up inside the house. So it's kind of Jumanji-esque. They have to like keep playing and to beat each one of their fears. And it is just really 
creepy but not too creepy and I just really loved the story so far. Um, I've only read the first book which is The Hunter and I'm just super excited to continue on with this series. Also, um, the game maker, who's the one who has them all trapped in this game, has some kind of secret thing for Jenny. We don't really know why or what it is, even if he's like in love with her or is there something else going on. And also, Jenny's extra scared about the top room in the house because the top room in the house has her worst fear and she has never told anyone what this fear is. And we as the audience don't even know what it is. So it's just super, super cool. And I would highly recommend reading this series, especially if you like anything kind of set in the 90s. It's got that really awesome, dark, folly 90s vibe. And I just like kind of Buffy-ish. And I just really love that. So um, I would highly recommend this for the fall time. Number eight is the Raven Cycle series by Maggie Steve Otter. Um, I'm sure you all know what this series is about, but this series follows Blue, who is the daughter of a psychic, and she lives with a whole bunch of psychics, but she has no psychic powers. And she meets a group of four boys who are on a quest to find this dead Welsh king, and when they find him, he's supposed to grant them a favor. So it's kind of got a lot of, like, magic and... Or not even full on magic, but just like this cool, eerie magicalness. The magic system is very interesting and eerie, and I love it. The setting is very folly and eerie, so I just I think it's a great one to read during the fall time. This is the third book, Blue Lily Lily Blue. The first one is just called The Raven Boys, and I just love it. And I haven't read the third one yet. Again, I have it out from the library, so I'll hopefully get to it sometime before the end of the year. Um, it's just super super awesome. I highly recommend it for the fall. Book number nine is actually a classic, and that is Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen. I'm currently reading this one. I'm rereading this one for the Ostentatious Book Club, and it is just a great fall pick. Um, it is a retelling, not a retelling, but like a parody of the original gothic novels that were written during Jane Austen's time, and so it's hilarious, um, especially if you know anything about any gothic novels like Jane Eyre or Wuthering Heights or any of those, but even like other ones. Um, I don't really know too, too many other gothic novels. Um, I think, I can't remember any of the names of them any, anymore. I used to know a whole bunch of names of gothic novels because I wanted to read a whole bunch of them, and then I never got around to it, and I've now forgotten all the names. So if you guys have any recommendations for gothic novels, please leave them down below. <laughs> but anyways, this is a parody of a gothic novel, so it's really funny, but it also has some little bit of spooky elements. Um, it's kind of like a dark comedy, in a sense. So I really love this book. Um, I'm rereading it again, and I just... It's just wonderful. So, highly recommend it. Number 10 is an adult mystery series, and that is The Heather Wells Mysteries by Meg Cabot. This is the third book in the series called Big Boned, um, but the first book is called Size 12 is Not Fat. This series follows our main character, Heather Wells, and she is a dorm director at a college, but when things go terribly wrong, and so there have been some murders. And the first book, there's one murder, and the next book, there's another murder. A lot of people get murdered, and her her dorm ends up getting, getting nicknamed Death Dorm. But anyways, she kind of has that kind of same vibe as, like, Jessica Fletcher from, um, from Murder, She Wrote. So she's just kind of there, and she's solving the mysteries. She also, um, aside from the mysterious kind of creepy factor of the murder mysteries, we also have... Um, a lot of comedy. I mean, Meg Cabot is such an amazing comedian. I just love all of her writing, and it always makes me laugh. I just, I just love all of her characters. They just are so funny. So anyways, Heather is a former pop star, and she's also trying to get her current music career off the ground, and she hasn't been able to because she can't outlive her pop star days. And she is currently rooming with a private detective who's actually the brother of her ex-fiance, who was also a child pop star. And it's just a lot of fun and a lot of shenanigans go down. Um, and her character is so hilarious. I just relate to her character so much in so many ways. But that murder mystery factor, I feel like, is what gives it a really great folly vibe. So I highly recommend this if you want a comedy, but also something... A little bit more realistic -y, murder -y, mystery type stuff. Number 11 is an adult fantasy series, and that is the 500 Kingdoms series by Mercedes Lackey. This series is absolutely amazing. Basically, it's sort of a fairy tale retellings series, but 
in this world, we have a magic system called the tradition. And the tradition wants to force every character to go down a traditional fairy tale path. And so, for example, the main character of this book is Elena, and Elena lives with her stepmother and awful stepsisters, and they're very mean to her. And she lives in a tiny kingdom, and she should be her kingdom's Cinderella. That's the path that the tradition has chosen for her when her father passed away. But her prince is an infant, so he's never going to come and rescue her. He's, she's never going to get to live happily ever after at the palace, and she's going to be stuck in this situation forever because the tradition will continue to push her in that direction until until that takes place which it can never do so her fairy godmother comes and instead of transforming her into cinderella and her going off to the ball which the ball is not a coronation ball the ball is a celebration of the birth of the prince ball um instead of getting her all dressed up to go to that she teaches her to be a fairy godmother and the fairy godmothers are the ones who actually manipulate the tradition to make these stories go the way that they want them to go and for good not for evil um to make sure that they all the characters that they come across or that they help end up with a happily ever after it's really great a lot of the characters cross over between the books and i just really enjoy this series a lot i will say this is an adult fantasy so there is some mature content in here so if that is something you were trying to avoid this might not be the book for you but i just love the atmosphere of this for the fall time so it's just wonderful you should definitely pick it up Number 12 is actually an adult romance series, and that is the Donovan series by Nora Roberts. This series follows a group of, or a family of witches, and they, each story follows a different family member who is a witch. Um, and in this story, um, it's the Celtic witchcraft, so the males are also witches, not like wizards or warlocks. So it's Celtic witchcraft, and um, it's really, really cool. I love the atmospheres of these, and I also really love the characters. I just feel like that, um, I love some more than others. I feel like I relate to some of the characters a lot. Um, again, this is a romance novel, so definitely mature content in here. So again, if that's something you're trying to avoid, this will not be the series for you. But if you're looking for something that's romancy and magical and beautiful for the fall time, I would highly recommend picking this series up. There are actually two books in each of these, and so the first two are Captivated and Entranced, and the second two are Charmed and Enchanted. I particularly love Charmed and Enchanted, but I like these two as well. Um, they just have some great, wonderful magicaliness um, in them, and I just love them. Their world and their family bond is just wonderful. I just felt like that she really wrote the characters really well, so highly recommend these. And last, but certainly not least, is number 13, and that is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. So you all probably know The Hobbit because we have now had three movies. If you didn't already know The Hobbit before, you do now. Um, but this book follows Bilbo Baggins on his adventure to help a group of dwarves reclaim their mountain kingdom and get rid of a dragon that's in there. So this is a fantasy, obviously, and it's just a great thing to read during the fall. It's very folksy. You have the travels through the forests and stuff like that that are all very um, fall feeling, and I just love it. I love the type of tale it is. It just feels like something that you would hear if you sat around a campfire eating s'mores, you would just like talk about this, or like someone would tell you this story, and it would be totally like, the perfect thing to hear during the fall time. So I highly recommend The Hobbit for the fall. If you tried reading Lord of the Rings and you didn't like it, or if you found it to be slow or boring, I would still highly suggest picking up The Hobbit. Um, I just tried to read the Lord of the Rings when I was in the eighth grade and I found them to be absolutely boring and I never actually finished them. I do plan on trying to reread them. Don't slaughter me, I promise. I love I love the story, I love the characters, but I need to go back and try to reread them. So when I decided I was going to do that originally, I decided to pick this up and I loved this one. It's really a lot more fast paced and like I said, it's got that folk tale feel to it. So it's just not as long and drawn out and I just really, really love it. So this is an absolutely wonderful book to read for the fall time and I hope that you all really enjoy it if you haven't already read it. All right, everyone. So that is all the books I have to recommend for you during for your fall reads. I hope that 
some of you found something to read this fall from this awesome stack of books and if you are planning on reading any of these or if you've already read any of these please let me know down in the comments I'd love to chat with you about them and talk about our love of all of these awesome folly books if you like this video give it a thumbs up and I post new videos every Tuesday Thursday and Sunday so please click subscribe if you want to be notified when the videos come up Sometimes I'm a little late still. I'm still trying to get used to my schedule that I set for myself. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in another video really, really soon. Bye.